Hello everyone. Today is Ash Wednesday. Normally we'd be going to church, but Canon Dose can make the sign of the cross on our foreheads with ashes. Ashes that came from burning last year's palm crosses. But we can't do that this year. We need to do something else to mark this special day. Why is today so important? Well, it's the first day of Lent. Lent is the 40 days, not including Sundays, leading up to Easter. Also, before he started his ministry, Jesus spent 40 days in the desert listening to God. We'll talk more about that on Sunday. So back to these ashes. When, what other time do you know that the sign of the cross was made on our foreheads? I'll give you a hint. Water was involved. If you said baptism, you're right. When Ken and Joseph baptizes a baby or a child or an adult, he uses water to wash over the foreheads, and then he makes the sign of the cross on their foreheads to show them or to show everyone that they are a child of God and to welcome them into the community of Christ and to the community of that particular parish. So why do we use ashes on Ash Wednesday? Well, in the very first book of the Bible in Genesis, it says that God created us from clay and dust. And when we pass away, our souls go to live with God in heaven forever, but our bodies decay back to dust. So it's a reminder that we started off with dust and ended like dust. So Ken and Joseph would say something to the effect, from dust you were to created and to dust you shall return. The other important thing about Ash Wednesday is that it's a, an intentional opportunity to say sorry to God for all the things that we have done that we shouldn't have and for not doing the things that we should have, like maybe helping somebody that we were too busy or wanted to hang out with our friends. So when we do that, we get closer to God. Saying sorry to God helps us get closer to God. And we know God loves us and will forgive us. So let's say a prayer. First, let's make the sign of the cross on our own foreheads, like Ken and Joseph might have done, and close your eyes. Dear God, thank you for loving us. Today we want to say how especially sorry we are for all the things that we have done that we shouldn't have, and for not doing the things that we should have. Please help us to change, to be the person you want us to be. Amen. The other thing we're going to do today is we're going to create a special place to come to to pray. Welcome to my prayer space. I have my prayer table in a spare room. It has a futon in it that converts to a bed when we have guests. And it also has my prayer table and a comfy chair to sit in. You can create your prayer space in any room of your house. You don't have a spare room that you can create a prayer space in. You can create it almost anywhere. In the corner of your playroom, that place that you can go when no one else is there. Or maybe a place where your family can gather. Maybe a corner of the living room or a corner of the dining room, or a corner of any space that you have in your home. And all you have to do is have a small table. This one is a portable table and a place to sit. You can sit on the floor on cushions. You can sit on the 
hair. It's really optional. You can create it any way you want. So, the first thing we want to do with our little prayer table is to add something on top, like a little cloth. Now I have a purple cloth that I put on mine because we're heading into Lent now. And purple is the color of Lent. I'm lucky because I'm in ministry, I have lots of different cloths that I can use for different reasons. But if you don't, that's okay. You can use a towel, a blanket, anything. Just something to cover the table. What next? I have my cross. And if you don't have a cross, you don't have to worry. You can make one. And I have one that I made a while ago out of sticks. As you can see, it's just two sticks that I lashed together in the center. And then I have a piece of clay that I can stick it in and it will stand up on my prayer table. What else do you think we should have on a prayer table? Well, I have a Bible on mine, because sometimes when I come to be by myself, I'm not sure exactly what I want to do. Sometimes I think, oh, maybe I should pray, or maybe I should meditate, or maybe... Sometimes it's just much nicer to sit down and open up the Bible to a favorite story. So, or a favorite scripture. So if you have a children's Bible or the Spark Story Bible, that might be something good to add to your prayer table. Just for that quiet time when you want to be with God. I know I have a candle on mine. I have a candle on mine, and I also have battery-operated candles on mine. So you may want to add that to your prayer table. I wouldn't recommend using the real candle unless you have your family there, you know, your parents or adults there. But absolutely use a battery-operated candle that you can use. And the reason why we use candles is the flame of the candle is a visual reminder of the presence of the Holy Spirit. In the story of Pentecost, we hear that the Holy Spirit came down on the disciples and stayed as a flame on top of their heads. So it's that flame from the candle that reminds us that the Holy Spirit is always present. The other thing is I come to pray and we sometimes need visual reminders of how to pray. So last summer I did a YouTube video on the five-fingered prayer and I put it up on the St. John's YouTube channel <laughs> so you can go there and find it and make your own if you like. It's just a reminder sometimes we sit down and we go to pray but everything's kind of after that day we just had we're not sure exactly what we want to say and this helps. The thumb reminds us to pray for people who are closest to us the pointer finger reminds us to pray for people who show us the way, like teachers in school and teachers in Sunday school and our priest in church. The middle finger is to pray for our leaders of the world, and they need lots of prayer. We want to pray that they listen to God and they make their decisions. The middle finger is to pray for those in need, those who are sad those who are sick, those who just need us to pray for them. And the baby finger, we remember to pray for ourselves. We ask God for the things that we need. We say sorry to God. We tell God how much we love God. Well, that will on our table. Also, if you were in Sunday school, the day we made palm crosses, crosses that fit into our palms, we made them specially just like that, you can see, that we can hold on to them, something to hold on to while we pray. So you might want to add that to your table. You have one of those. Last Ash Wednesday, if you were with us, we made some prayer beads, also similar to the hand. So if you have those, you might want to add those to your table. Add 
things that are meaningful to you. Things that remind you of something deeper in your relationship with God. I have a shelf on mine. This reminds me of my baptism. Maybe your parents still have your baptism candle and you can put that on your, your table to remind me that I am a child of God and to remind you of the same. I also have sand on mine because Jesus spent 40 days in the desert. Again, we'll talk about that next Sunday. And he, and during that time, he was tempted and he had, had a bit of a rough time. So it reminds me when I have a rough day, but Jesus is with me and Jesus experienced that too. I hope you have fun creating your prayer table. And I hope you are able to find time each week, even if possibly each day, to just spend some quiet time with God. Maybe it's only five minutes a day. Maybe it's 10 minutes a week. Maybe you can gather by yourself when you're having a really terrible day and just need to decompress it for a few minutes. God. Or maybe your family can gather once a week and say prayers. We sent out a Lenten box to some families who were who registered for them, and there are family prayers in that box. I'll try and send family prayers out for you each week on the week as well. Maybe that's a nice time for your family to gather. See how it goes during Lent. And they say it takes 30 days for us to develop a habit. Lent is 40 days. What a wonderful habit that would be to develop. I pray that God blesses your Lenten journey. Thanks for being with me today.